Hey everyone, Matt Basarsic from RazorEmporium.com. Today, to continue our Razor Archive series teaching you guys some of the history of Gillette. Uh, moving right along, we're out of the old type, now into the second series ever to come out from Gillette, the new improved. So, I've been waiting a long time to get to this series because um, it's one of my favorite, I would say. When I was a budding young collector, uh, these were some of the sets I always dreamed of owning. So, the new improved series, what is it? Uh, it is a Razor series that debuted from Gillette in 1921. Uh, this is uh, one year and some change after the Gillette patent expired for the original safety razor, um, you know, the double ring that, that basically lasted all throughout the uh, tens and teens. Uh, but that patent was going to expire in January of 1920, and uh, they already had their ducks in a row, to say the least. Um, about six months before the, you know, the patent expired, there were starting to be rumors that maybe Gillette was going to abandon the $5 razor model, which was most of their razors were in the $5 price range, and really go after the dollar model now that their patent was going to be gone and they really couldn't have these huge loss leaders like this um, that were offset by blade sales if their patents are now gone. But unbeknownst to their competitors, Gillette had already secured another patent and it was based off some improvements to the razor handle, five key improvements for that matter, and they, they, they depicted those improvements um, constantly again and again in their advertisements. So if you look at your standard new improved razor, you can see these improvements right away as compared to the old type. So you have this flat guard here that is something different. Um, you know, the old type has that curved guard. Uh, the fact that the cap overhangs, that was a feature that's called the overhanging cap. Um, to help with, I guess, nicks and cuts and just get a better blade angle. It's more consistent. This channel that goes down the, uh, the guard, it kind of has a relief underneath the, the comb, that was supposed to also help with gathering lather and whiskers and clearing out easier. Um, the fulcrum shoulder, this little tiny squared off piece of that squared uh, guard, that's right where the, the blade will actually bend and create your constant blade angles. So that was an improvement to have that squared off end. Uh, and the diamond knurling was another one that you had better grip with this diamond knurling, which was also very just kind of, you know, period correct, 1920s, a roaring 20s, it looks very um, deco kind of. And then last but not least, the micrometric precision that uh, they still were continuing to tell people, and it was, it was true, uh, that you could adjust the razor slightly just by loosening it. And that was very true on razors of this era that had a thick carbon steel blade that it would have enough spring in it that if you loosen it you know, slightly, the cap would raise and you could slightly change the blade angle and blade gap. So uh, these are the improvements that were touted. So continuing with some of the successes of the old type era, Gillette, continued to do the serial numbering uh, on their razor models. Now, instead of uh, on the barrel, uh, these are back to on the guard. Um, and so if you look at any of the new improved era razors, at least the $5 models, you will see a full number that gives you a production code and production uh, number itself. So you can figure out the year from the letter, and you can also then figure out the exact number in production. Now, when Gillette uh, wanted to make this splash into the world with their new razor and tell everyone, hey, we're not going to do the dollar razor, they, they did it in a very elaborate way, which is, of course, Gillette. Um, they held a private meeting for the Gillette salesmen in April of 1921. Uh, all the salesmen from around the country came to the Boston plant, and they unveiled these razors in an extremely elaborate manner, spent over $400, um, in presentation, which was a lot of money back in the day, just to have these individual sets come out of these elaborate boxes. They, you know, they'd have like a little stage and a little curtain over it, and they'd push a button, and the sets, you know, would open up automatically, and the curtain would be brought up, and a spotlight would hit it, and I mean, the the crowd of salesmen just went wild. Uh, you got to remember. Salesmen were probably thinking it may be doom and gloom for the company if they were going to get into the dollar razor market. And to be shown an entire series of razors that uh, had these different cases, different names, different personalities, characteristics, all at once 
was overwhelming and uh, the crowd went wild, so to speak. Very interesting planning and foresight on Gillette's part that they planned out the entire series ahead of time. You couldn't say the same about the old type where they had you know, the bulldog and the big fellow and milady kind of as progressions and were coming out as they were thinking of them. This all came out together as one series and it maintained one series throughout its entire life. The new improved era went from about 1921 until 1929, 1930, right on the cusp. Um, there are late models that exist of those. And like I said, relatively unchanged. Now, the model era that we're gonna be looking at right here is what's referred to as the, the new standard, the new, the new Gillette, the new improved Gillette. Now, there is, of course, the official case that says new standard like this, um, that people will associate, but you gotta remember, to Gillette, this was all the new standard razor in the sense that um, they were all gonna look like this. The $5 models were all gonna look like this, more or less. They're gonna have these five improved features. Um, they're gonna be available in gold or silver plated. Uh, they really just had different cases to designate um, different, different quality thresholds or different features. Probably the most notable and interesting one ever to come out, um, I think still legendary to this day, is the Bostonian that has this really interesting case that as you open it up, it, it elevates the, uh, the razor. And I, I still think it's probably the absolute coolest case Gillette ever made. Um, love to make a case like this today. These, this stuff is pretty ingenious. Um, another really classic one that people think of is the Richwood. That's going to feature this this wooden box and kind of is a little bit of a hallmark to the uh, the big fellow, you know, in the sense that it's a wooden box. But they also had a, f a couple other familiar names like uh, the aristocrat. So you guys have heard of the aristocrat and we covered that in the, you know, old type era. Well, the aristocrat made another appearance again, uh, this time just being a, your standard $5 razor from Gillette, the new standard razor, uh, but now put into this aristocratic French ivory, you know, faux ivory um, case a little bit more nice presentation. They also had models that I don't have here, and that's because uh, as a collector, I was never fortunate enough to either um, find one or buy one or hold on to one. You gotta remember, as a collector, um, you know, a lot of times I've bought things, I've sold things, I've traded things, I can't hold on to every single thing. That there, there's a business to run here, so. Um, some of these sets would include the Chippendale, um, you know, set that has uh, kind of the hallmark Chippendale engraving on it uh, that is kind of famous for Chippendale furniture from the 1770s, you know, 1800s kind of English high-end furniture. Um, they also had the Algonquin, which was another kind of uh, high-end engraved set that had a new brocade style pattern engraved on it. And Algonquin was a social club in Boston. It was kind of a high-end social club. They had sets uh, like the Deluxe at $75. It was heavily engraved and monogrammed, um, kind of the ultimate in luxury. And that would be a set today at $75 in 1921. I mean, we're talking probably $1,200 to $1,500 today. So definitely a set for somebody that had the coin to afford that. Uh, the new improved series overall was uh, something that that took Gillette and really showed their their um, dominance of the market. The fact that they could come from this position of possible weakness with a patent expiring, then to, to turn it and pivot it into strength of having this entire set designed, having all the store displays designed and sent out to, to, to retailers. Um, for the announcement in May of 1921, they even had um, you know, all their stores, store owners, they had everyone swear, you know, on a notary, swear an oath that they were going to sell these razors and uh, with, with these razor sets to make sure that the public was able to get them and there was a big splash entry for this product. It was so, uh, so successful of a, of a product release that in places like New York City, in front of store displays, they even had to have uh, police officers to get people to not crowd the streets in front of these stores. There were so such overwhelming crowds to look at this new, you know, presentation of these razors. Um, this was serious shaving business, you know, meaning that um, people were really excited. The general public was excited to see this. 
the the salesmen were excited to get it out in the market and and be selling these models five dollars for the silver models six dollars for the gold models while they still had dollar models they were they they did actually end up doing the dollar models they did the shaw mutt and other things kind of clearing out parts from the uh from the old type era able to still make money in the blades and give, give people the cheap handles that's fine we'll, we'll do that so they actually covered all their bases they had the one dollar model five six dollar models then these nicer exquisite models that were you know 10 25 75 dollar models so no matter what you wanted in the world of shaving Gillette was now able to offer it and they had the advertising the the sales power you know uh, powerhouse behind it to be able to do this two million dollars in marketing I mean that's unreal in today's money that they were spending two million dollars in 1921 to market this new series of razors but it all proved extremely successful for Gillette and they more than made their money back and this is really classic Gillette this is where they became the uh, the powerhouse I keep on saying that word powerhouse that they are today. We still know them as the marketing powerhouse that, that really came here in the 1920s. And as a collector for me, that's one reason I always love the, the 1920s. I think it's where you see their marketing really starting to shine. So another thing to consider with these razors is rarity. You know, we always like to think about uh, when we're doing these videos, the scale of, of one, you can find it at a thrift store or, and five, it belongs in a museum. I would say that the um, new improved era from Bostonian is certainly just the razor alone in the middle. I would say these are two and a half, maybe three, three and a half out of five, because they actually are kind of harder to come by. You have a hard time finding a bunch on eBay, um, especially in good condition like this. The gold is just absolutely immaculate. Um, but if you add in the presentation case, again, a nice condition, or even the shipper box, we're certainly gonna be at five out of five. So these are very valuable sets. Easily a set like this could sell in the $100, $200, $300 range, just depends on condition and which model and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you have the price tag, the blade bank, you know, full, full of blades, stuff like that really adds to the value. Um, but not a common razor. You do not find them usually at, at thrift stores. Um, I'm not sure why that reason is. You know, one problem with these razors is they would crack, just like the old type. You have a little hairline crack sometimes on it. Um, I'm not sure. They obviously made millions of them. Maybe people held on to them and they don't want to give them up. Maybe they threw them all in the garbage can. Who knows? But I know that they're harder to find than, let's say, a, a ball and old type that you'll find every time you go out to an antique store. So uh, that is all I have on the, on the new improved, new standard Razor series. And we'll cover some more of the new improved in another video. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment. If you know something about these Razors I didn't mention, let me know. And you can be entered into win the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt just by leaving a comment below, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Share with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving.